I found a new socialist channel called Leaflets. It's not nearly as big as, say, Valsh or Second Thought, although they did an interview with Second Thought. Um, but I want to respond to this video as it plays, you know, the usual format that a bunch of people hate, at least, you know, leftists hate, because it's pretty effective at taking every little point that they make and shredding them apart. But I'll probably do a terrible job, so go ahead and, down in the comments right now, go ahead and just write, uh, let's say, you are so ignorant and this video describes how horrible you are, blah, 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 blah. Just do it. Just go ahead and get that out of your system. Got that done? Okay. Let's talk. Socialism has been gaining quite a bit of traction over the last decade or so, and I bet a lot of you are wondering not just what it is, but asking yourself if you should be one. Socialism isn't just one thing. There are multiple different theories and schools of thought, and I'm not interested in going over those theories in this video. Thank God. I'm more interested in raising take questions forever. you can ask yourself about the efficacy of our current system. No, this is not about questions you can ask yourself about the efficacy of our current system. This is about getting you to believe a certain way. It's not about asking questions of yourself. He's trying to convince you to think what he wants you to think. But this is a frequent rhetorical tactic. And they love to make you ask questions. A, I'm just asking questions. I'm just putting questions in your mind. The problem usually is in the framing of the questions. So let's find out what these questions are and what implicit assumptions they perhaps hold or what they might be ignoring. And I want you to keep in mind that the questions I raise are only one small sliver of our current system. Looks like cheese. In our society, we believe that the political spheres and the economic spheres should be separate from each other. Some believe in more regulation Who thinks of the that? economic sphere under the political sphere, and others believe in less. But most believe that they're two separate entities. Okay, who is, who is most? Who on earth are they talking about? Is there anyone that would actually be watching this video? that thinks that the social and economic sides of things, or the political and economic sides of things, are different? Like, that they're not linked? You know, the guys who set the policies under which the entire economy operates? Yeah, I don't think so. So we're already off to a pretty bad start. This is false. Most don't believe that political and economical are separate. That's why it... <sighs> God almighty. And I want to ask the question, why just can't do we stand believe this that? crap? The economic sphere we don't believe that dominates more aspects of our day-to-day -day life than the political sphere. The political is how the economical works. The economic sphere doesn't function without the political sphere setting up the framework under which it works. They're hopelessly intertwined. So this video is already off to a horrible start. But what say do we have over the economics? Okay. I've already seen this. I know where this is going. What say do we have? This video spends a lot of time trying to tell you you don't have a say over the economic sphere. And you know what? As far as the politicians go, that's kind of true. Especially given the whole 2020 election situation and uh, the anomalies. But, you know, we're not allowed to talk about that on YouTube. So I can't really say anything further on that issue. But, yeah, we, we don't have a lot of say over the political framework that gets laid down unless enough people get angry. But what say do we have over the economic sphere? Well, are you talking about all of it? Are you talking about nationally, globally? Or are we talking about locally? Because I don't have a say over, let's say, how the town I live in, how the economy runs in the town I live in. I don't have a say over what they do over at that factory with a thousand workers down the road. But what I do have a say in is what I purchase, where I work, what I do. I have a say in my participation in that. I cannot form the environment around me into what I want. Because, at least in the United States, there's 330-something million other people that aren't me. And if everybody cannot get 
what they want. The, everybody cannot have a huge say. It's just not possible. It all starts at the level of the individual, and that's why individualism is so important and collectivism is such bullshit. It all starts with the individual. It all starts with you and your choices and what you do. Now, what he's going to do in a minute is he's going to hogtie you and say you don't have any choices and that the system needs to be burned down because of it. Eh, something to that effect. So, let's listen. If we're hired for a job, do we get any say in how many hours we work? Yes. Or how much we're paid? Yes, you do. Maybe not if you're in like a restaurant or whatever and they don't care. Um, but in most jobs, you do at least have some degree of a say. When you are hired, you can say, I want to work these hours. You have that ability to negotiate in a lot of jobs what your working hours are, what your working conditions are. That people don't do that, that does not mean they didn't have a say. It means that they opted out of saying. And you know what? If you're desperate for work... Maybe you don't feel like you have a say. I get that. But let's be honest here. You can attempt to negotiate. If they won't budge, and you, and you know, if they have all the power in the relationship, fine. Whatever. But the thing is, this is not universal. This is not even remotely universal. You do get a say in how many hours you work and how much you're paid. You can choose not to work for poor pay. You can ask for a raise. You can negotiate your salary, or your pay. Paid, or what to wear. What to wear. <laughs> yeah. Or what the company that's spends important. money on. Do we no, you don't get any say in what the company spends money on because that is the purview of the people managing the company. Now, if you want to say in what a company spends its money on, you become a manager that has that authority. Do you want to have that authority, and the responsibility that comes with it. Are you willing to do what has to be done to achieve that managerial position that gives you that oversight? Something tells me most people would say no. Most people don't want to be managers, because it sucks. It really, really sucks. You have to work more hours because you now have responsibilities that are not your family. You can't goof off as much. You don't have as much free time because now you've taken on responsibilities. More of them. You get the right to control what the company does if you take on the responsibilities that come with that. Do you really have much say at all when we're hired by someone? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. If you don't like your job, you can go work at another one. But... Does that change anything? Yes. Yes, it does. Now, not just you, but if an employer is offering garbage pay for a lot of work, if they're offering, like, a job that, you know, is supposed to be, you know, you're, you're looking for web development, and they want you to basically be the person who designs the website, codes the website, maintains the servers, does all, the, all of that, and they want you to do it for $12 an hour in California... And nobody, nobody takes that job, then yes, it changes a lot. Because now that employer doesn't fill that position. They have a need, and they're being stupid and unreasonable, and all the people are refusing to do it. The problem is really just people who actually take this work. And you start getting into, I don't want to get into it, but you start getting into things like uh, outsourcing and illegal immigration and all that. People who can take those jobs at the lower rates of pay basically insulate these bigger businesses from being able to do this to domestic workers. So, you know, ironically, if you want to be able to change something here, then what you need is to cut off the flow of cheap labor at wage slave levels by outsourcing and illegal immigration. You need to cut those people out of the economy, which is not something that leftists support. Maybe your values align more with what your new job wants you to do, but do you have any say in that? Or do you just have to cross your fingers and hope their views align more with yours? Kinda? Kinda, sorta? You know what? If they're... 
you do a job to get paid money. You don't do a job to exact your morality upon the other people that are doing other jobs besides you. You don't do a job to demand your company align with your personal values. You know, that's not, that's not your job. You don't go to, your values don't matter to the company and they shouldn't matter. Your personal values, you know, if you want to make your employment a, if you want to take that business relationship and make it personal like that, that's your problem. And if you do that, you can't complain when they decide they don't want to associate with you because you're taking business decisions they make and making them into personal, moral, or ethical judgments. You hurt the business by doing stuff like that, like the Google employees that were like, oh, we don't, we don't agree with what you're doing here or there, so we're going to, like, right. Google shouldn't have to care. You know, the guy who runs a pressure washing business shouldn't have to care that they don't like that he got paid to pressure wash or, or got his business got paid to pressure wash this company that does business with these, you know, conservatives or whatever that they don't like. Like, if you got paid to pressure wash uh, a conservative think tank's sidewalks, <clears throat> the workers should not have a say in whether or not the company does that. The workers' values, if they hate that conservative think tank or whatever, and they think that they're awful, evil people, that's that's your problem. That's that worker's problem. And you know what? If If your values are more important than your paycheck, then you can leave. And you should leave. And that way, no one else at that company has to deal with you. Because chances are pretty good that if you're taking business stuff and shoveling your personal values into it like that, especially at a low level where you don't have a say anyway, and you're just there for a paycheck anyway, then you're probably a toxic person to be around. Okay, then start your own business if you're going to keep complaining. Let's say I'm in a fortunate and privileged Yes, position. okay, uh, uh, start your own business is a perfectly valid thing. And he's going to go off and make out like most people can't do that. And you know what? That's true. Some people can't do that. Some people are in a situation where they have no resources whatsoever. But you know what? If you have an internet connection and you, you can learn a skill online, you can go to Fiverr, you can make some money, okay? You can get started somewhere. It's never been easier to get started doing something new for money over the internet. Where I can start my own business. So you're talking about privilege and money and all that. You don't need privilege and money to start a business when it comes to, like, say, getting on Fiverr. You go learn a skill, figure out how to do it. Once you're good enough that you can charge a little money, you go to Fiverr, you get some gigs, you build up your skills, you build up your business, and you know what? Once you're good enough, you can strike out on your own with the money that you saved up. You can do it on nights. You can do it on weekends, you know? But don't give me this crap about, oh, well, if you come from a privileged position, maybe you can start your own business. You can't start, like, you can't start the next Amazon with no money, but you can start somewhere. You don't have to make Amazon. You can't make Amazon overnight with no money. But you can learn, for example, to do illustration, graphic design. You can do that, and you don't need a lot of money to do that. There are free programs that let you do that. You can learn web development for free. There's just so much you can do for free. And this guy's like, well, only privileged people can, can start their own business. Only privileged people can set up their own income stream. It's an outright lie. It's basically the whole point of this kind of crap is to take the choice away from you. This is a, an intellectual framework where people take all the possible ways that they can improve and make lives better, make their lives better, just advance in general, climb the economic ladder and go, but I'm not able to do that. It's this guy's and socialists in general just sell hopelessness. They say, well, you can't do anything. So rather than you trying to do something, why don't you just change the whole system so that you can continue to not have to actually do anything? But does that fundamentally change anything either? Or have I now become the ultimate lawmaker? That
Yes, you become when you start a business, you get to run that business. <laughs> That's the way it works. You know, that it, this is not a bad thing. This is the whole point. You can make your own business, be the boss, make your own rules. And you know what? If someone doesn't like working for you, they can do that as well. A dictator of my own small kingdom. We dictator. Loaded term. Saying dictator has implications that go beyond just full control over a company. Dictator implies negative actions. It implies that you hurt people. Because when we hear dictator, so this this is, I need to make a full video on this, but this is something that I'm starting to call straddling the gap. You have this gap here, right, between the technical meaning of something the, or the technical truth and the colloquial or understood meaning of something, connotations, things that are not necessarily part of a definition, but that when someone hears it, it comes loaded with these other things or this slightly different meaning. So when you say dictator, dictator basically just means that this person is a sole controller of some kind of government or entity or whatever, right? Just one person who has full control of everything. But when you say dictator, people understand it as Saddam Hussein and, you know, people getting killed and dying and so on. Because what do all the dictators in history inevitably have to do to retain their power? They have to hurt people. They have to hurt a lot of people to retain their dictatorship. And that's just all there is to that. And people like this love to straddle that gap. They love to use a word like dictator. Because even though technically, okay, they're probably pretty correct in using it. If you stay strictly technical, when people hear it, it comes loaded with emotions. It comes loaded with imagery of murder, of death, of pain. So when they say dictator, they're implying that you, running your 10-person uh, lawn care and business maintenance business, for example... Um, that, that you're running your little small business with 10 people running around on mowers and putting in fence posts and replacing lights on the side of buildings, that now you're killing people. You're hurting and killing people. That that's what you're doing. That's what's being invoked. But the problem is, when you watch a video like this, because it, it's told in this way, you, you're more apt to accept it anyway. So he's just put the thought in your head that if you run a business, you are a dictator. Dictators are bad people. Dictators hurt and kill other people. Therefore, you are basically literally Hitler. You are Saddam Hussein. You, By running your little lawn care business and having full control over it, you are horrible. And it's not true. Provably, absolutely, easily observed, not true. How many people are you killing in your lawnmower business? How many of your workers are you trying to put into the ground? How many of them are you trying to screw over in your lawn care business? Chances are pretty good if you got 10 employees that you're not going to be doing that because you know what happens if you do? They leave. They could even start their own. Lawn care businesses are actually very easy to start. So the last thing you'd want to do is abuse your workers if you're in that industry because they can go out on their own very easily. A lawnmower, a used lawnmower, is $100, and they can start there and just walk and walk and walk until they can afford a bigger one. So, yeah, it's important to call this out. And the problem is, what's this? Uh, the time code on this says I'm already up to 18 minutes for a video I've gotten a minute and 37 seconds into. The reason that I talk so much, even though these videos are so short, is that there's all this stuff that's hidden in plain sight. All this stuff to unpack. And inevitably in the comments what's going to happen is a bunch of idiot socialists who don't like me and can't stand this crap and don't like that somebody's refuting their stupid ideology are going to be like, oh, you're just, you're pulling all this stuff out that he didn't say. Well, no, of course he didn't directly say it, but he said it. He knows. He knows when he says it what you think. He knows what people will think when they say dictator. He knows. The problem is, if no one says, this is what's really being said, this is what you are invoking in people's heads, and you know you're doing it, you're being dishonest by straddling the gap. If no one says anything about it, then you don't figure it out. You, you can be tricked in this way. This is a trick, a psychological trick. 
Let's keep going. We've been told our whole lives that we live in a democracy. No, 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 no. We live in a representative republic, which technically is a not a direct democracy, but is still a democracy. That we Notice the, how the term gets fudged. We should vote. That everyone deserves a voice in how their society is run. That it doesn't matter your income or your skin color or your gender. That we should all have a say. Yet the places we spend a good third of our lives in, we have absolutely no control. In fact... Okay. See, this is, this is kind of silly. You do have control. You can walk away. You can start your own. This is not entirely true. Um, because... I mean, I've already gone over it. I, I don't really have to repeat myself on this, do I? In fact, the places we work are effectively dictatorships. We're told we have the free... Dictatorships, see? Again, and look at the imagery on the screen. Military. Running a business is not a dictatorship. Freedom to switch jobs or to start our own businesses, but even in the most ideal case where you're afforded those particular already refuted. freedoms, nothing is fundamentally changed. Fundamental change. Notice it's always about systemic or fundamental change. See, this is the problem. Okay, you have a system. You have to work within that system. Capitalist systems offer the absolute greatest opportunity to climb the economic ladder. And it's never been easier. The barrier to entry has never been lower. Because now you can go learn a skill online using YouTube videos, go to Fiverr or any other site like that. And all you have to do is take that skill that you learned online and start doing it. And you can build your skill and make money at the same time. But continue with the hopelessness. Come on. The dictatorship is still... Yes, and you've walked away from it. You've walked away from the dictatorship, and you're doing your own thing. So you have taken away your support. See, your work is support for it, right? So you walk away. Now you've taken away your support. You have the freedom of association. You can walk away and do your own thing. The dictatorship is still there, but you're not helping with it. You walked away from it. If enough people stood up for their principles, if enough people were willing to suffer the pain that comes with walking away and taking a different path that will hurt if enough people weren't lazy about their life if they weren't just coasting through on that straight line that they're already headed on if they dropped the momentum accepted that it hurts to make a change made the change that they think they need to make the dictatorship would go away so to speak the the negative aspects of that company would vanish there so I want you to ask yourself, what? why can't we create democracy in the economic sphere? We have it. We have it. Freedom of association is democracy in the economic sphere. What you don't get democratic control over is a company that someone else built and someone else runs. Because the difference between the worker and the people running the company is that if the company goes under, the worker just goes and finds another job. At worst, they've lost a steady stream of paychecks. If the company goes under, the boss, the guy who runs the place, the guy who built it, the guy who has all these investors he has to answer to, yeah, that guy, he's stuck. Because a bunch of documents pierce the corporate veil in most of these cases. You get held personally liable for things even if you have a corporate entity, okay? And a lot of people don't get this. The guy who started the company, the guy at the top of this pyramid, if the company comes crashing down, he's screwed really screwed because a lot of those debts that were used to start everything come back on him could be sued by investors for taking actions that caused them to lose their money you know there's all kinds of injury that comes to the guy running the business if it collapses the worker basically just walks away from the rubble and goes somewhere else so the problem is you don't give someone who has no investment and you know, has is taking on no risk, you don't give them control over that company. If you want control, you have to take on the risk. If workers want the ability to say where the company goes and what the company does, are they also going to accept that if their choices don't work out for the company, are they also going to accept debt? Are they going to go into debt when the company collapses? Are they going to take on those debts? 
are they going to take, you know, potential imprisonment if they do something that defrauds someone, for example? Are they going to take on the responsibility? You can't have those rights without the responsibility. Also, here's another issue. Compartmentalization. You don't have your accountant handle court cases. You don't have your accountant handle counting your inventory, generally speaking. People have different skill sets, okay? People have different skill sets. You put people with those different skill sets in charge of different things at the company. An accountant or a warehouse worker or a construction worker should have no say in the business decisions, in the contract acquisition decisions, for example, for the company. That's not what they know. You don't put someone in charge of something they don't know anything about. Why do you not get democracy in the economic sphere? Because, well, if the business is big enough, it literally becomes impossible. You'd have hundreds of thousands of people that have to be polled. But on a smaller scale, you, you have people who don't understand what's going on making decisions. You don't give people the authority over something if they don't know what they're doing. It's that simple. That's guaranteed to fail. It's a great, this, this de democracy in the economic sphere, in the way that is being discussed here, is a great way for everything to fail. Why can't we have a say in what we make or how we live or in how much we work? There's a lot of nuance you do. in the situation, you already but do. to me, it often boils down <clears throat> to this. You either believe that some people are smarter. Uh, either or proposition. Careful. Logical fallacy. Maybe. Better, harder working, more wise, and that they deserve to dictate the lives of others. Or you believe... Yeah, okay. Some people... Some people know what they're doing and some don't. Is it really that hard to believe? Crud, I have to go. ...that everyone should have the freedom to we'll have their voice this later. matter. 